I've told my husband he can never contact our babysitter again and I'm not sure if I'm in the wrong for this. In context, my husband and I are both 33 years old. We have two kids together aged four and two. You both work full time and one of my husband's co-workers has a daughter who is 20 years old and was looking for part time work so we hired her about eight months ago as our babysitter. Initially she was great with the kids but I've had some kind of strange concerns. For example, I once came home from work and my husband was already home and I asked him why he didn't dismiss Emily but he just said that she was having fun with the kids. A couple of weeks ago I also drove by my husband's office and her car was there and his excuse was that she was probably just visiting her dad. In addition to this I found blonde hairs in his truck. She's always done up glam when I come home and... I have found messages between them, though it's nothing romantic, but I think it's quite obvious that some messages have been deleted because some conversations just aren't adding up. I haven't confronted him about this, but I did message Emily telling her that we wouldn't be needing her services anymore because my sister has offered to help out. He seemed quite upset about this and apologised for it not working out, but said if I changed my mind to let her know. Not even five minutes later, my husband called me up and asked me why I fired Emily. I think she must have told him, but he's saying that his friend told him at work. We argued about this when he came home and I said this is my final decision and I'm not changing my mind on this. I did mention a few things such as the text messages between them but he's denied everything and said it's all in my head. I told him that unless he wants a divorce that he will respect my wishes and not contact her ever again. I'm not 100% sure if he had an affair but honestly I don't think my mental health could take knowing this. I don't want to be a single mum and miserable so I've just swept this under the carpet. He's saying I'm completely crazy and I've made this all up in my head and have no evidence against him but I think it's kind of obvious. So am I in the wrong here? Am I the bad apple for requiring my guests change clothes before sitting on my furniture? I, 20 male, live alone. I'm a very neat person. I recently moved out into my own place and something that I started thinking about was how many germs from the outside we track into our houses. I always change out of my outside clothes as soon as I get home, but whenever I have guests over, they don't. I have no idea where they've been or what their clothes have been exposed to. So about a month ago, I bought a bunch of those clear disposable raincoats and I started telling people who I invited over that they could either bring a change of fresh clothes to change into to wear in my house or wear one of these little coats that I got before sitting on my furniture. I also offered to help wash the clothes that they change out of, you know, if they want to. Story time about how I married my blind date after knowing each other for two weeks. After I broke up with my ex who cheated on me four times, I swore off men. But my friends and family were constantly telling me that I should at least try dating other people. I went two full years without dating anyone, and it was the best decision I ever made. Instead of going out on dates, I decided to take that time to work on myself. I prioritized myself and started doing the things that I've always wanted to do. For example, I always wanted to learn how to play the piano, so I put myself into piano classes. I also started taking belly dancing classes, and I signed up to Pilates. I also decided to focus on my mental health because I realized that I always depended on validation from men. It was the happiest I'd ever been. My family even saw the changes in me, and my mom told me that maybe it was time for me to start dating. Last year, my sister signed up to a bunch of dating apps and she actually met some really good men i really thought about it long and hard and i decided to sign up for one too and i told myself that i would take it slow and easy finally i went on my first date it didn't go very well because my date only talked about himself and didn't ask me any questions but then my second date was this amazing guy and i kid you not it was love at first sight part two is up part two of how i married my blind date after knowing each other for only two weeks so i walk into the restaurant and i know what he looks like he was already sitting at the table but as soon as we locked eyes it was instant attraction but not just attraction it was love i honestly don't know how to describe it it was this feeling i'd never felt before when i sat down at the table we instantly connected we talked about everything Thing. from our childhoods up until that point we talked about school friends even our favorite foods favorite colors places we wanted to visit i'm talking about everything we even talked about our family problems which i had never done that with anyone else we basically ordered the entire menu and over the next five hours we talked and ate and laughed you know when there's moments of silence in a conversation and sometimes it's awkward there was none of that we were constantly talking and asking each other questions the restaurant actually had to tell us to go home when we said goodbye he asked me if he could take me to breakfast 
the next day. And of course, I said yes. As I was driving home, I knew that this was the guy I wanted to marry. For the next week, we hung out almost every single day when we weren't working. And we texted each other day and night. He would send me paragraphs. By the end of the week, he asked me if he could meet my parents. We had a wonderful dinner and my parents loved him. He put so much effort into talking to them and he even brought them gifts. The following day, I met his family. And they love me too. The following Monday, he asked me to move in with him and I said yes. Part 3 is up. Part three of how I married my blind date after only knowing each other for two weeks. After one week of knowing each other, he asked me to move in. Like I said, my parents loved him, but when I told him that we were going to move in together after knowing each other for one week, they thought it was a terrible idea. But there was no way I was backing out on moving in with him. I told him that this was a risk I was willing to take. I was a grown adult, so I had the final word. That very same week, I started moving all my stuff in. After living together for three days, we were having so much fun. I was living with my best friend. We would tell each other everything. We decided to host a dinner for our family and friends. His family got along really well with my family and his friends ended up loving me. By the end of that second week, my boyfriend was talking about getting married and I said it would be a dream to marry him. And guess what? The next day, he takes me out for an early breakfast. While we're sitting at the restaurant, the server brings over a box and he tells me to open it. And inside was a beautiful emerald ring. I had told him on our first date that emeralds were my favorite stones. He got down on one knee and asked me to marry him. And I said yes. In order to avoid having to convince our families, we went straight to the court and got married the following day. Yes, I know it's totally crazy, but I am so happy. We've been married now for three years. We've traveled to eight different countries and we also decided to have children. I never thought I would marry the man of my dreams after two weeks of knowing him, but my risk paid off. What should we name our first baby? Parenting advice. My kid's friend's parent lied to me and told my kid to keep a secret. This is an anonymous story. I have an 11 year old daughter and she has a best friend who's seven. They used to be our neighbors for three years until they moved about 15 minutes away when the mom got back with the dad. I don't know the dad. I have only met him in passing. Before they moved away, I allowed T, my daughter, to stay over the night after I had known the mom for like two years. After they moved, I wasn't comfortable with having her stay over because I didn't know the dad. But he traveled for work a lot, so it wasn't really an issue. She could stay over pretty often. F is a lot younger and doesn't feel comfortable away from her mom. Flash forward to now, he doesn't travel anymore, so she can't stay anymore. At first, the mom said she was understanding of why I said no sleepovers when the dad was home. And then I found out she was questioning T why I said no and told her it was hurting the dad's feelings. She messaged me and said the dad was out of town for the weekend hunting so T could stay. T got home tonight and I was asking what they did and she was mentioning fireworks and that they did that last time with the dad. I asked her if he was home last night and she got shifty and said I don't know I'm tired. I let it go because I don't know how to address this. I don't want her to be afraid to tell me things but I absolutely can't let this go. I don't believe he is a bad guy, I don't know him, and this is a hard boundary. It's a huge step over on their part, and I'm so angry they thought they could just do this and tell her to keep it from me. This isn't the first time the mom has overstepped with T, but I don't know how to fix this and the girls remain friends. Any advice? Edit to add, it's not that he's a male, it's that he's a stranger to me. I'm not implying he's dangerous. Just that I don't let my kids stay the night with strangers. I was totally fine with no sleepovers. I have a general no sleepovers rule. I bent it because they lived in the same building. And I knew the mom and the daughter for so long. When they moved, it put me in a weird spot. Like I said, I've also tried. But F just turned 17 and isn't comfortable away from being her mom. Which is totally understandable. Any advice? How much would it take for you to taste test baby shit? Like how much money? Yeah. Thousand bucks? Like how, like if it was a really, if it was literally like a, like a like raindrop? A drop, no, like a, a, a rain mustard, drop? a mustard squirt. That could be, that could be so many things. I'll demonstrate in the kitchen, but like just picture, <laughs> picture like um a quarter size dollop. A quarter size dollop. Quarter, yeah. How much money? Thousand bucks? Would you lick it? Would I get sick? Or what is there a is if I, you puke is up to you. But I'm saying like would I get sick like in the long run? Like, no, you wouldn't get so we're like, gonna pretend there's no E. coli there's or anything. No like weird. issues long run, it's just in just, the moment. Yeah. I'd go for a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> what? You wouldn't? Wow, no. 
I'd take at least five. <laughs> story time about how my husband moved his mistress into our home and is making me pay for all the bills. This time is now my story time. I sent him an Instagram. By the way, this is my beautiful sister, Marcella. She's going on a fancy boat for a bridal shower. Back to the story. My husband and I have been together for four years. He did cheat on me when we were boyfriend and girlfriend, but I did forgive him for that. We were engaged for about two years, which in my book is a very long time. He kept putting off the wedding, and here was my mistake. I gave him an ultimatum. We either got married or we needed to break up. I decided to tell him the truth. There were several men in my life that were interested in dating me. I kept rejecting them because I thought I was going to get married to this man. And of course, he got incredibly jealous. The next day, we set a date for our wedding. Fast forward to last year. I started to suspect that he was seeing someone else. I noticed that he started hiding his phone from me. And he would always have it on do not disturb mode. So I started getting really suspicious, of course. I started my own business online and I was selling a lot of products through my website. So I decided to get myself a new car. After that, he started acting even stranger. He would make comments about how nice my car was and that the least I could have done was bought him one too. There was no way I was going to buy him a car. His behavior was so odd. One day, he fell asleep on the couch, so I decided to look at his phone. That's when I found that he was hiding a bunch of dating apps. He had over 40 conversations on each app. He was a serial dater. Part 2 is up. Story time about how my husband moved his mistress into our home and is making me pay for all the bills. This time is not my story time. I sent him on Instagram. This is my beautiful sister, you guys. I'm doing her makeup. When I found all the dating apps on my husband's phone, I quickly confronted him. Of course, he started to lie. He told me his friends downloaded all the dating apps on his phone as a joke. So I pulled up all the conversations he had on the dating apps and I started reading them to him. That's when he said that he was just testing it out to see if he could find anybody as an experiment. Well, guess what? I questioned him for two hours. By the end of the two hours, he told me the truth. He said that he had been dating a few women and that he was only doing it because he wasn't happy in the marriage. That's when I told him that he should have just told me the truth because I've been wasting all my time trying to be with him. He then swore to me up and down that he would stop. A few months later, he was acting strange again. And this time I decided to follow him. The first day I started following him i saw he went to some girl's house knocked on her door and i confronted them together my husband told me he was in love part three is a story time about how my husband moved his mistress into our home and is making me pay for all the bills this is not my story time i sent him an instagram after i knocked on her door and confronted them my husband told me that he fell in love it felt like someone had kicked me in the chest i told him that i just wanted to speak civilly so we all sat down and spoke for five hours by the end of those five hours my husband somehow convinced me that the best thing was for her to move into our home apparently she had financial trouble and her ex was stalking her my husband told me that the best thing would be for all of us to be in a relationship and that that would make him happiest otherwise he would want to get a divorce from me so i felt like i had to agree so this girl ended up moving into her house but my husband decided to quit his job so that he could take care of her because of her crazy ex and he told me that i was making enough money for the three of us that's when i found myself having to pay for all of our dinners our groceries and rent after a few weeks i told him that he and her needed to move out or that they both needed to get a job that's when he told me that i would be putting both their lives in danger if i made them get jobs because of her ex i know i should just get a divorce but somehow i think that this can be fixed I need you guys to give me the strength to divorce him. Help me out. Story time. I recently tested positive for chlamydia, but my boyfriend didn't. I didn't sleep with anyone and he claims to haven't either. This is not my story. So this is definitely a weird one and my boyfriend's behavior has been so weird from when he initially told me he went and got tested. Six days ago, my boyfriend told me he tested positive for chlamydia. I was so outraged, so many things going in my mind. I didn't sleep with anyone throughout these two years we have been together. I of course thought he cheated on me. I asked him. He swore on his life he didn't. We talked on the phone and he was actually really convincing. I thought initially, maybe he got it before we started seeing each other and just never got tested. So I asked him about that. He said he actually did get tested once a year ago and was negative. Then I was outraged some more. He said he went and got tested because he was having some painful urination. We kept going back and forth. Later, I guess, he got his actual results. He showed me a screenshot. And what did it say? That he was negative for chlamydia and gonorrhea. So I asked him why he told me initially he had it. He told me when he was talking to the nurse. But my question is, why the fuck did you tell me you tested positive when you didn't have any results? This to me was super weird, but I had calmed down because seeing that result put my mind at ease. That he didn't cheat. However, one weird thing that he kept insisting was that I got tested. He must have mentioned it four times that same day. And he kept telling me, send me your results when you get it. If he didn't cheat and I didn't cheat and he already had a negative result, why was he so insistent that I get tested? I got tested the same exact day that we were talking about all of this. I got my results a few days later and I was positive for chlamydia. What the fuck? Same thoughts came back and he was definitely cheating on me. 
I showed him my results, and his behavior was super weird. I mean, he did ask me if I had slept with someone, and that he wouldn't be mad if I did. What the fuck? I mean, if I knew my boyfriend cheated on me, I would be livid. He seemed completely fine and told me, just go get treated, babe. Now I know it's possible I could have given it to him for my previous relationship I was in. But no, I actually got tested back in 2019 after I broke up with my ex and four other times during the course of our relationship. I was negative each time. I only got tested during our relationship because I was having weird symptoms like discharge burning urination for months and my guide would always recommend automatically testing me for stis one time i was tested during my pap my boyfriend tried to convince me the times i was negative could have been a false negative there is absolutely no way all these times i got tested were false he also tried to convince me i probably had this for a long time since my ex had cheated on me with multiple women honestly my theory is that he cheated on me started having symptoms went and got tested and treated Got tested again to show me he was negative and then tell me about it so he could put the blame on me. I know that I very well could have a false positive, but how common is that really? I'll go get tested again just to make sure, but this is definitely not the behavior I would expect from my boyfriend. Any advice? I'm going away and I've asked my best friend to not stay in my house when my husband's there and I'm not sure if I'm in the wrong for this. For context, my husband and I are 36 years old and we live together with our son. My best friend has been staying with us for around six weeks while her home is renovated. My husband and I have been together for a really long time while my best friend has stayed single, got her own house and she kind of just likes dating new men. She's very carefree when it comes to men. She doesn't want children and she's even dated committed men in the past. Anyway, aside from her flirtation, side she's never kind of stepped over the line with my husband or said anything towards him in a flirty way and i've got no concern the issue is that i need to go to vegas for five days with work and i've said to her that i really wouldn't feel comfortable with her being here alone with my husband and son whilst i'm away i said i'd prefer if she just went and stayed elsewhere while i'm away but she can of course come back to stay with us until her house is done i honestly thought she would just be like oh yeah that's fine but she actually asked me why and i just told her that because of her reputation and the way she's acted in the past i'm just not comfortable with her around my husband she was immediately defensive and said that she's really hurt and even started to cry saying how could i not trust her we've been best friends for our whole life I honestly feel a little bit guilty but I'm not willing to change my stance on this. She's since left the house and hasn't messaged me or anything and I'm afraid that I have really upset her. So am I in the wrong for this? Am I the bad apple for kicking my daughter-in-law out of my house? I'm very lucky that my husband makes a lot of money so I don't have to work. Now my oldest son, 22, married. A few examples of why I don't like her. Her wedding gift that I gave to her, it said on the card it was from me and my husband. And she literally said back to me, Oh, I know this is really just from your husband since it's not your money that paid for anything. Whenever I talk about volunteering at an animal shelter, a homeless shelter, anything that I'm doing at the time, she always just for some reason tells me, That's not a real job. I mean, it doesn't make any money. We had a get together last night and I made a homemade meal. When I was setting everything out, she came up to me and made a comment saying, no wonder you get to make a home cooked meal like this. I mean, it's not like you do anything else during the day. That's when I lost it. I told her she either needs to respect me or get the heck out of my house story time about how I scam my followers out of $20,000. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I repeat, this is not my story time. I started out as an influencer on Instagram a few years ago. A few of my posts went viral and after a month I had a million followers. Suddenly I had so many brands reaching out to me. Some of the brands I had never heard of, so I didn't really answer back. But I did start working with some brands that I did know. The only problem was that they would only pay me about $70 to $100 per post. By the way, I had a lot of debt at the time, so only making that much was not working for me. I decided to ask for more money, but some of the brands just wouldn't pay it. So by the end of the first month, I had only made about $500. That was not enough to pay my rent, and I was not about to get a day job. I had a million followers on Instagram. I was a glorified influencer. So instead, I started reaching out to some of these brands that I had never heard of before. One of them was offering me $5,000 to post a link on my story for three days. Of 
course I accepted. Part of me thought that it was a scam, but I didn't care at the time. I needed the money. After three days of posting the link, they paid me the $5,000. I was able to pay my rent, my car insurance, and my phone bill. But here's the thing. I started getting a bunch of DMs from my followers who were super angry. They were calling me a scammer and a bunch of other names. So I decided to do some investigating. And I found out that the whole thing was a scam. Part two is part two of how I scammed my followers out of $20,000. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I was sending me on Instagram. When I started seeing all the angry messages from my followers, I asked them what was wrong. One girl sent me screenshots of all the stuff that she had bought with the link that I posted. She told me that she Googled the company and that it was a scam. So I decided not to reply back to her. I wrote to the company and told them that I was getting a lot of hate messages. But of course, the company ghosted me. I saw five other messages and they were all basically saying the same thing. That the website was a total scam and that they had purchased stuff off of it. But here's the thing. For the first time, I had money. So I decided to just ignore it. Which I know is a bad thing. But like, it's also their fault for not doing their research. But I did learn my lesson. After that, I Googled every single company that ever reached out to me. But here's where it gets worse. Two weeks later, I get another $5,000 check from the same company. But I was so happy. I deposited that check really fast. So here's what I had to do. I blocked every single person who told me that the website was a scam. And then I just tried to forget about it. I also had to delete all the hate comments. And a few weeks after that, I get another $5,000 check. I had $15,000 in the bank. Part three is part three of how I scammed my followers out of $20,000. Disclaimers is not my story time. I was sending me on Instagram. I had made $15,000 from all of the scams, but it didn't stop there. A few weeks later, I got another $5,000 check. So in total, I had $20,000. This was the most money I'd ever had in my life, and I was not about to send it back. But I was still getting a lot of hate on Instagram. I ended up blocking over 500 people. And then finally, the company reached out to me. I told them my followers were saying that they were scamming them, but the company made up some excuse saying that the shipments had been delayed and that my followers would receive all their purchases. Then they offered me another $5,000 to post a different link. And guess what? Of course I accepted. They offered me $7,000 this time. I knew very well that this was probably another scam, but I still accepted. A few days later, I posted the link, but the payment never came. I waited a few weeks before contacting the company, and they ghosted me. I wrote to them every single day, but I never got the $7,000. So guess what? I also got scammed too. It's been two years since that happened and I don't feel bad about it. I now make a lot more money than 20,000, but we all start somewhere. Part of me does feel guilty for scamming everyone. So sometimes I think about possibly paying them back. And don't start trying to guess in the comments who I am. You will never guess. Or maybe you will. Whatever, I'm $20,000 richer, bye. I'm jealous of my best friend and I developed the crush on her husband. This is an anonymous story. I'm honestly feeling like trash right now. I have known E since I was five and she is the kindest, gentlest, purest in the world and I love her. But I am so jealous of her and I hate myself for it. We got pregnant at the same time. Only E and J got a surrogate. My pregnancy sucked, the birth was painful, recovery long, and the worst part was actually learning how to take care of a baby. The differences in our lives became impossible to ignore. E still this XS beauty while I gained weight and can't lose it. She got a nurse to take care of the baby at night so they could sleep well while I haven't slept since the baby was born. She has professional cleaners hired to deep clean twice a week while I have time to deep clean maybe once a month. She cooks and bakes these wonders while I have to do it with cheese sandwiches because I don't have time to cook. The worst part is she helps me so much. E is the one that got me all my cravings while I was pregnant. She hired someone to clean my house for three months after I gave birth. Brought me meals every day and left food and baked goods. She babysits for me all the time and she still brings me food every week because she buys and cooks too much. And the main differences between us is our husbands. My husband and I have been together since I was 17 and he was 20. On and off until we decided to get married and I got pregnant. E and J met when they were 19, got engaged 5 years later and married the next year. They had the dream wedding while ours was in a courthouse. They had a three month honeymoon and we had none. They basically live in a mansion while we live in a two bedroom apartment. Her husband is organized and considerate, the perfect gentleman, while mine isn't. My husband and I started fighting even more after the baby was born. He refuses to pull his weight with chores and baby duties. We fight about money a lot. I'm a nurse and he's a social worker, so the differences in our incomes have always been a score point for us. Jay loves spoiling E, cooks almost every meal, plans sweets, does all the diaper changing. 
The worst part, Jay is insanely handsome and I think I started having feelings for him. Jay is so supportive. He was with E when she lost her father and went through a horrible depression. Jay was the one who didn't want E to get pregnant because of how bad her depression was. It's very likely she has postpartum depression. E and Jay look like they are in their honeymoon stage while me and my husband are at each other's throat all the time. I'm lost. I love E with all my heart and would never touch Jay. But I can't get rid of this stupid crush and the fucking jealousy is driving me crazy. How do I deal with this? Am I the bad apple for being honest with a police officer? I, 19 female, was in the same class as my cousin. In the middle of class, my cousin left with her backpack. I didn't think anything of it at the time. I figured maybe she's just going home early, but then five minutes later, she came back into class with a different backpack. The vice principal and a police officer, they walk into the room and they look around and they just ask, where is it? Mind you, I have no idea what's going on or what it is. I just know that whatever's going on is bad enough to get a school police officer involved. That's when I see it. The textbook on my cousin's desk has like a lump in it. It's not really closing properly. Something's just clearly hidden inside the book. I don't know what it is or if it's important, but I just kind of raise my hand and point it out. Am I the asshole for canceling dinner and going home over something my boyfriend's dog did? I'll preface this by saying that I, 25 female, have been seeing Michael, 31 male, for a while now. He's a really funny, a bit too sarcastic though, guy, and we pretty much get along well. We've been dating for four months. Michael likes the food I cook, and he wanted me to come to his house and cook him dinner, and also meet his dog for the first time. I only saw him in pictures slash videos. He's overprotective of him. I grabbed all I needed from the store and went over to his house. All all went well. I met his dog, then we sat down to talk. Suddenly, his dog started moving in a funny way. Michael was laughing while looking at me. I felt confused. I asked him what the dog was doing, and Michael said that the dog was telling him about me. I was like, um, okay? And then he flat out said that the dog thought I was ugly. This shocked me completely. I looked at Michael and asked if he was serious. He started explaining that this dog is like that with some people, and that I shouldn't get offended over an animal's behavior. I felt horrible because I, as a person who has always struggled with self-esteem and am no stranger to the word ugly, my issue wasn't the dog but with what Michael said. It's like he was indirectly giving his opinion about my looks and using his dog as an excuse. Long story short, we had an argument and I ended up canceling dinner and going home. Michael called several times. Then when I picked up, he was lashing out the entire time saying that I overreacted and that I cannot blame him and punish him for something his dog did. He advised me to get rid of the quote, toxic sensitivity I have and deal with whatever insecurity I have as soon as possible because what happened will set the tone for our relationship and eventually our marriage later. I did respond later, which caused another argument. My sister said I messed things up with my stupidity and that I should have laughed it off, but for some reason, I wasn't able to. Did I overreact here? No. Fucking run, dude. The way that he was gaslighting the shit out of her, like, yeah, what the fuck is toxic sensitivity? <laughs> That's a new one. <laughs> deal with that insecurity, bitch. I know I called you ugly to your face, but like deal with it deal with it or else it's gonna affect our relationship bro get the fuck out of here dude and she's over there making dinner you know what's funny is dogs have no thoughts dogs don't think that person is ugly like dogs don't do that yeah dogs hump everyone dogs yeah. think dogs think like ball food safety like that's what dogs think about dogs don't aren't like that person is the ugliest bitch i've ever seen in my life it's, it's different if he was like joking because i've said that to my sister like oh my cats don't like you because they think you're ugly yeah but it seems like he was being serious that would fucking piss me off yeah people who are dating and, sure. and like new relationship yeah. with each other like yeah. i swear to god if billy ever jokingly called me ugly done you know what i mean when we were first dating yeah first four, four months, months yeah. four months that's in. rough fuck right there, that too. dude he's like oh ha ha sounds like you want to fuck your dog like why are you so like oh he does that sometimes ugly bitches am i right it sounds like he was trying to nag you and it didn't work then he gaslights you yeah. after that he's like then it's your fault yeah. yeah you're so insecure like why are you so insecure because my dog thinks you're a fucking ugly bitch <laughs> like that's what it sounds like yeah. and he's still doubling down yeah in the like the second phone call with her he's like why are you blaming me for something my dog did i can't control my he goes, dog here he is you take it up with him it's on facetime it's just yeah. a dog and he goes, see <laughs> he's still doing and it and the dog's looking he's <laughs> licking his pee pee and he's like see he still thinks you're ugly that's on him why are you I'm mad at me